If you wanted, if you preferred using a connector, for example, and just have it be a perfect radial arc around this, like, like around like that. Um, let's try implementing something similar. So, uh, first we need a block uh, like that, and stick a chip on it, and this block will be visible, non-collidable, and doesn't interact with the imp. And we'll have to turn off preview and visibility so we can work on it. So let's have the microchip open. Um, don't need the grid anymore. And we'll have a, a camera. Scope into it with L1 and X so we can set the view. This is this will be the view relative to this box, so it's useful to have it kind of near the box at least, and then you can have a better idea of what's going on. So now we can move that someplace. So let's say we wanted it to start here. Then um, as long as we have another sculpt like we have this by default in the scene, if we um, grab a connector, a motor bolt, and just stick it anywhere on one sculpt, somewhere on the special sculpt we have, then we move this over here. Um, if we turn on the grid, that can actually help lining things up. So I used L1 and triangle to line it, the grid up with this model. So hopefully there's some central point we can use for this. And while holding this, we can press triangle and it aligns it to the grid, the current grid that we're using. So let's, yeah, that's probably about right. And then we can twist this, rotate it around using L2. And I'll just go like that. <coughs> um, yeah, so now if we just play time, it's it's rushing around. Uh, let's make it ignore gravity, no density. Hmm. It's kind of jittering around the place, and I don't know why. Uh, but as long as it doesn't affect the okay, it's okay now. Uh, as long as it doesn't affect the actual view, then we're okay. Okay, so now we can adjust this because we probably want it a bit closer, um, and that's fine because as we play, it still rotates round just as normal. So now it looks like that. Uh, but because it wasn't like central in the frame, it was kind of stayed non-central in the frame. That's a bit better. Um, so let's let's um, implement that same thing, uh, and I'll just do it fresh because it doesn't take too long. So let's grab a controller sensor. And for this, we don't have to worry about the looping. Because of, because of um, that's the advantage of using these connector motor bolt things. So um, so we need that splitter to get the left stick Y, and then we'll just have that plug into probably the speed. Yeah, cycles per minute. Um, Cycles per minute. Uh, I'll I'll go into that in a sec, but it's it's not necessarily what you think it is. Um, so now when we play time, nothing happens. Let's make this make sure this is on remote control. Now when I press right, it increases the speed to the on the actual motor bolt. So if we just increase that like that. Now when we press right, then it's moving around. Yeah, I think that'll do. Um, okay. And I think for this, we'll just have it so that any speed change 
goes through a bit of ramping up and ramping down. I think that'll be okay. Plug that back in there. So now push right and it just has a little bit of fading and a bit of kind of inertia there. Um, and you could have something like that for the other the other timer implementation. Um, but we want it to have that same cooldown thing. So if we have the speed and when X isn't being pushed and it's equal to zero, then we'll set the speed of this to go up and when it's being pushed as in it's not zero then we'll reset this timer and we'll have some value no. uh, like that and we'll just do the same thing have finished to power the the value and we'll send that off to the um the motor bolt so then if we haven't touched the um touch the left stick for 2.3 seconds it will start moving on its own like that but then we can take over and leave it for a bit and then it goes like that um, cool